Good morning, everybody. It's December 20th. Uh, this might be one of my last videos here before the Christmas holidays are coming around. So uh, if I don't do another one before Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. And hopefully I'll see you at the crop production show in Saskatoon again. Not to be confused with reproduction show. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> I joke around because I've said that before by accident. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. It caused a bit of a stir. But anyways... As you can clearly see, uh, I'm picking up some more fertilizer bins. Uh, these two just came, and this is the last one, which would be three. And this other whole roll, there's about 26 of them over there. Uh, that's actually split up between uh, myself, my brothers, and my dad. And I actually have the least amount of them, which is the reason why I'm picking up a few more. Now, I don't... I'll probably put fertilizer in these ones because they're not tied down, and I need to actually hold them down. But my other hopper bins in that long row we use for uh, seed. So like last year, if you can remember, we pre-treated all of our seed and it just makes for smooth sailing during harvest or harvest. I hope I hope it makes for smooth sailing during harvest. But anyway, for seeding. So I wanna pre-treat all the seed again and when you're pre-treating seed, you gotta have a lot of bins. Like you gotta pre-treat the chickpeas and that's gonna take a few bins, pre-treat the durum, pre-treat the wheat. Um, pre-treat the lentils right there you're gonna need four maybe five six bins just to hold your seed and then uh, you're gonna have to have some fertilizer bins here as well so you need a few bins and these are meridian they're 18 by 20 18 foot diameter and they're about 20 tall and if you just wanted to put wheat in these bins they hold about they say 5,000 bushels but you can't really get 5,000 in there so um, it's probably like 4,800 bushels full so these are fertilizer bins, hence they have the poke hole right there. Right there, that's the poke hole. There's no aeration in these bins because they're used for fertilizer slash seed. So these two have been lined up, thanks to my brothers. I wasn't here. Uh, they're just gonna plop this bin down and then since the pad is froze, we're actually gonna move it around with the skid steer and uh, so on and so forth. But we won't be doing that today. I'm just gonna finish this video. Um, Get this bin up i gotta collect some samples for chickpeas lentils wheat durum to get them seed tested remember i did that video um of the seed lab in swift current i'll maybe throw that description i'll throw that link in the description of this video if you're interested in checking that out um it is pretty cool what they do and uh check it out if you're interested in how they uh, check the germination and the vigor of seed so it's important to know to make sure you have a good seed lot so I need to get on that. There's a lot of things I need to get on. It's running out of days. Seeding is coming, you guys. Seeding is coming. But as you can tell, the bin's going up here. They literally just plop it right up like that. So we're starting another row. We can only go out here so far before we actually go off the cliff. We've built this up like, I don't know, 20 or 30 feet, 20 feet or something like that. This pin, these last couple bins, they actually got to, they're sinking down. We're gonna have to move them in the spring. They got product in them right now. So we're gonna start another row. So uh, these bins, these are meridians. I have West deals up at the North Farm. These are 1820s and uh, the North Farm is 1620s. So a little bit narrower, same height, just a little narrower. The reason for that is it's just these were the bins we started with. So once you have a line of them, you're gonna keep it. But big thanks to the co-op. Uh, that's where I bought them from for hauling them down here. We already actually washed them some salt on the road so we wash them here at the yard and then we're gonna they can actually kick that over with their trailer get it a lot closer and we can just get down here with the little skits here we have a little skits here so that way we can throw gravel here and there or whatnot you know looking back at it we'd probably do it different 
because the price of these skids is like 5,000 bucks. So, you know, if you go 30 bins long at 5,000 bucks, that's quite a bit of money. And uh, we probably should just bought them without the skid, like this, unbolt the skid, and then just bolted it right down on concrete. The concrete's expensive, but it's about the same price as the skid once you figure it out. And then obviously there's no sinking, no settling, it's all perfectly in a perfect line. But that's hindsight. Now we have all these skids. We're gonna do with all these skids. <laughs> no, we don't do that much anymore. No time to play hockey. <laughs> I know we should have our priorities straight. There's commenting we're not gonna get much use out of our rink this year, and that's true because it's so warm. We're gonna have to twist it a little bit with the skid steer. Just about put one more here. Maybe we should get another one. Just about get one more. Yeah, no, I was thinking about it. I'm like, wow, wouldn't take very much to get another one here. It gets pretty expensive though after a while. They're not giving these bins away. Cash deal, 50%. You buy three and get the fourth one free? I <laughs> can't comment, they can't comment. Oh man. Say what? Oh yeah, do a fertilizer deal. I'll buy the fertilizer from you if I get the bins for free. That sounds like a heck of a deal. <laughs> oh man. All right. And now it's a done deal. Obviously we're gonna have to move it with our skid steer here. They slide on this frozen ground pretty good. And uh, we have blocks here for our, to keep them separated. Now I gotta go grab some uh, seed samples. Okay, so when you're filling a bin, whether it be a hopper bin or here, or a, uh, a big bin, truck here you can't see, but anyways, you're always, remember, you're always taking samples of every load, so every load is sampled, and that way you have a good average sample. You'll, you'll keep maybe a, two pails, and then try and get that down, reduced down to one pail per big bin, like a five gallon pail sample. Well, my samples for my wheat bin I don't know where all my samples went. Like, it, it, you can, it, it only works if you keep the pail of your samples and write on them and say, hey, that's A13 and A14 and A15 and wheat, wheat, Durham, five gallon pail of each. I don't know where they went. So, and I'm kind of in a hurry. I'm sure they're around, but, so I'm gonna do what you shouldn't do. And that is literally just scooping and grabbing off the top. It's not a fair representation of your whole bin. As you can tell, I already grabbed some out of this one. This one, I gotta do the exact same thing. These are chickpeas, by the way. Oh. I don't know if I can do this and hold the phone here, but... Oh. oh, no, I can't. And then you have a pail, a pail, a sample, of chickpeas, these are chickpeas. I like to take them over like a, one of those shaker type cleaners. I don't know what the word for them are. You can dump this whole bag in there, shake it clean, and you can clean them right up. They have that too, it just makes it easier if you do it. So we are collecting samples. So that way we can get them tested, and that way we know what we're working with. Just don't do it how I'm doing it. <laughs> do it right. And uh, find your pails. So we got two chickpeas, one red lentil, and we gotta go get derm and wheat. This is our scale room, hence the scales. This is where the sample should be. So this is a testing room, the grading room, the wall of bins where the thing, everything is. Uh, that's the, you can, 
stick stuff on this wall, write stuff on that wall, write stuff on there, scale. Here's all your pails. So you got an A6 pail, an A4 pail, A5, A13, A14. So one 50,000 bushel bin, you should have a pail. And then the same when you do bags, right? The problem is, I lost my pails. <laughs> or maybe they got set out there somewhere and they didn't get, here we go. So here's a wheat pail, we found a wheat pail. Awesome, this is Mike's wheat. This is exactly what I need. So this is an actual average sample of the bin. Awesome. Just don't know where my chickpea and red lentil one went. Or Durham. But. Yes. So that made our wheat easy. Like what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking this is my chickpea one. So this is, this is a fair representation of what they sampled. But it didn't get rode on. <laughs> <laughs> classic so then you're like well is it or isn't it because I grew clear field chickpeas and my brothers did not grow clear field chickpeas don't want to screw that up so since I don't know we won't use it we're gonna have to go to the bin all right this should be Durham it is Perfect, I gotta take a sample of this. All right, so we got two chicks, one lentil, this is the wheat, this is the durum. See how uh, this is an amber color, this is red. So yes, the, technically they're both wheat, this is you know amber durum wheat, this is hard red spring wheat, but I always just call it durum, okay? Durum wheat, durum. Pasta, bread, pasta, bread, pasta, bread, pasta, bread, you get the idea. So there we go. I'm gonna drop those off. Next time I'll try and either label or keep my pails where they should be. And uh, so we're gonna start cleaning seed here pretty quick. Give you a little update. Um, we need to start working on combines, but right now we're working on drills. So we've got two drills in the yard. You'd think it was seeding if I zoom up there. Right there. There's actually two in the yard. Uh, and I got another drill wing down in the grass down there and we're down changing all those bushings I'll just drive over there I'll drive over there all right so that drill over there uh, that's my drill one of the case tractors is on it we just winged that one down here this morning this drill I think is the one that Jared pulls which is actually Brian's it needs some tires that's tire this one's low I guess a low tire is no big deal but that one's flat and it always goes flat, so we gotta get that actually swapped out. We've been fighting with that tire for a while. But anyways, here's your openers. These are still the old school ones, remember? Uh, the newer XTCs have an updated kit for this where it's just, uh, it's all cast and it's just a quick pin versus squeezing this together. So this bolt has to be changed. We changed this already last year or the year before, maybe it was two years ago now, time flies and you're having fun. And uh, we've done all the bearings in these, which we don't have to do, but we do need to change this bolt again because uh, it's getting some wear and we got to change this little wee bolt because it wears out and when it wears out even if this keeper pin is in here this one right here the, your depth will move and if I don't know if you remember seeding with me this year up north on that drill that's winged down uh, they were moving all over the place I actually had to take bolts on like 30 of them and bolt them actually together so we're gonna pull all this apart change some bolts and now with these bushings there's bushings there's bushings, this thing's loaded with bushings. These independent opener drills is fun until you have to start changing bushings, okay? So, look at that. Now you don't have to change the bushing, but once it wears through that nylon bushing, you're going cast steel on steel, so that's not good. And if you wanted to change out all these openers, if you actually wore them out, you'd be looking at four hundred thousand dollars a drill nobody's gonna do that you're gonna send your drill to auction for that okay you're not gonna spend that kind of money so you can't let it wear in steel on steel so Terry's actually taking lead my older brother on this and uh, 
he's actually went to a machine shop. He's got a bunch of tools, machine, jigs made, everything, all that fun stuff to try and make this as quick as we can. Uh, we have to actually unbolt the openers in a lot of these areas, like right up here where that opener touches that two by four, like you actually have to pull the opener off because the bolt won't come out because you know, you got two by four right here of steel. So I think he said he's got down to four guys, 11 days working on drills. Just one, 11 days and he can do one drill. So it's a pretty big job, especially when you're sitting on frozen ground. I think they got some heated blankets and stuff to sit on, uh, but all this has to be done outside. We do not have a big shop to work on this, at least not yet. It is a plan, it is in the plan, it's in the works, but we don't have that yet. And the drills cannot wait for a shop to be built. So we're gonna be working on bushings all freaking winter. So thankfully, it's beautiful out you guys. There's no snow. Otherwise, we'd be sitting in two feet of snow while we're doing this at minus 25. Yes, we would be out here because it has to get done before seeding. So, and to change out the bushings, you're, it's not a big cost, just the actual little nylon bushing. Probably, I don't know what it'd be, 5,000 bucks, something like that. Maybe it's 10, I don't even know. But I know the big cost is if you start wearing into the components. It's just a lot of work getting these out because to try and get all these bolts out without wrecking them because they're seized in. They haven't been out ever. 100,000 acres on these drills. So a lot of acres on them. Obviously we need some packer tires that are split. But anyways, still cheaper than trading them off. Million dollars for a new drill. So uh, like, like, like a complete unit. So anyways, and all of our bearings are done. Though we might have to start doing some work to our mid-row banders. And by the look of this, I'm going to say yes. This should be down on the blade. Oh, the spring come unhooked. That's what happened. This is going to be a lot of fun, you guys. This is going to be a lot of fun. I hope that you're catching my sarcasm. Anyways, I got to get going. I got to get this. I got to get the tune town. Merry Christmas, guys, if I don't talk to you. Adios, amigos.